If you want to know what a stone wall was like in the past, you have to know something about what happens to walls after they are built, and like most of the walls that we are interested in, eventually abandoned. I say abandoned because, although a stone wall may seem like a very permanent structure, one can actually require a fair bit of maintenance to keep it upright. In the poem Mending Wall, written in 1914, the well-known New Englander Robert Frost talks about the work he and his neighbor have to do each spring on a wall in his backyard in Derry, New Hampshire. Something there is that doesn't love a wall, that sends the frozen ground swell under it, and spills the upper boulders in the sun, and makes gaps even two can pass abreast. The first thing Frost mentions is frozen ground swell knocking loose boulders from his wall, causing it to need mending every spring. What Robert Frost is referring to is something called frost heaving. As the water and soil freezes in the winter, it expands, exerting pressure upwards. If this is happening under a wall, this can gradually move the two halves of a double wall apart from each other, especially if there is a heavy capstone on top, resulting in a wall that is wider at the bottom than the top, and possibly in a collapse. Walls that run from east to west are especially susceptible, because the north side of the wall stays frozen for longer than the southern facing side, leading to uneven frost heaving. The other agents of the destruction of Frost's wall are people. For him, it's hunters looking for rabbits. But people can alter stone walls in probably an infinite number of ways. Very often, people take stones from old walls to use in other building projects, rebuild, adjust or add on to old walls, and knock down walls or push them aside. When a stone wall is pushed out of the way to make room for a road, this can result in two parallel flaps of stone on either side of the road, running in the direction the wall was plowed through. Stone walls running parallel to roads are seldom safe even if left standing. They are very vulnerable to being hit by cars. Stone walls are affected by many other forces as well. Gravity alone can settle the interior stones of a loosely packed double wall, which causes the stones on top of them to lean inwards, putting pressure on the stones at the bottom and eventually causing them to pop out. This can bring whole sections of wall crumbling down. As soon as they are built onto the landscape, stone walls become part of the local ecosystem and are shaped by the environment and the organisms that live there. Trees can impact walls in a variety of ways. Their leaves can fall on a wall and stain the stones over time. Falling branches or entire trees can knock down stones or entire wall sections, leaving gaps in the wall that remain long after the fallen tree has rotted away. Trees can also grow up through walls. The small mammals that live inside stone walls, like chipmunks, often stash nuts in their hideaways. With time, any nut that doesn't get eaten can fall through the wall, find soil, and grow, eventually splitting the wall as its trunk thickens. Even trees growing next to walls that never drop a branch can have a destructive effect. The presence of a forest has a humidifying effect on the air, and this encourages the growth of lichens, mosses, bacteria, and a wide variety of larger plants. Plants, lichens, fungi, and bacteria alter more than just the appearance of a wall with their beautiful colors and textures. They also wear down and break apart the stones. Lichens, which are actually symbiotic colonies of fungi and either green algae or cyanobacteria, secrete chemicals that decompose rocks slowly over time. Bacteria and fungi can also produce chemicals that increase weathering, and plants in the cracks of a wall can make cracks wider with their roots. Mosses growing on stone surfaces do the same with their roots, which can grow into pores in the stone. Weathering can also occur physically and chemically because of rainfall. How much a stone is affected by this depends on its mineral composition. Finally, time can result in the rotting and rusting away of wooden and metal materials that were once part of the wall, such as gates, fences, and gateposts. Sometimes all that remains of these are weathered fragments, holes, and gaps in a wall. When we look at artifacts from the past, we are never seeing them exactly as they were when they were first made. Therefore, when we examine something like an old stone wall for clues to its purpose and its age, it is important to consider all of the possible changes that time has wrought. Whatever effects we have on stone walls as we investigate them become part of their story of change over time. Just like a tree knocking down a segment of wall, weathering causing a stone to break, or hunters lifting stones to catch a rabbit, our actions on the wall also obscure the clues it can give us about its origins. Luckily, there's so much information that can be gained just by looking at a stone wall, 
that it's easy to leave the subjects of our investigations untouched and free to be pondered by countless others down the road.